Looking up at the night sky has inspired humanity for generations. Have you ever paused for a moment and allowed your life to go still as your heart reached out and looked up to the wonders of the stars? It's about instilling tranquility in all things when we marvel at the beauty of the universe. When you have a moment to yourself, stop whatever you're doing and look up at the night sky. Look up, and you'll be fascinated by what you see. You'll have this hungry curiosity to learn more. So, Aim, what was uh, the first thing that triggered your fascination with the stars? Uh, easy, I looked up when I was a kid. Mm. Uh, saw the night sky and wondered what the hell are all those twinkling lights up there. Do you have any other memorable moments of your early explorations? Oh, basically reading the books by very famous astronomers uh, like Fred Hoyle and Albert Einstein. What was the first memory that triggered your fascination with the stars? Um, I was born into the space race, so I had an interest in space and the heavens, if you like, from the age of six, seven, seven years old. The great thing about the University of Western Sydney is that it facilitates quite a substantial interest in astronomy to the general public. Could you also describe a bit about um, who are the people that normally attend like the public events? Sure, the curious people of the public who are interested in astronomy are probably asking that same question. What's up there? What's going on in, in the latest science and so on? So they're curious, they come to the observatory. Uh, at the observatory, they'll uh, have passionate people telling them about the latest thing uh, going on in uh, astronomy. Now, one of the interesting things is we also run uh, astronomy nights for the public, which are always very crowded, um, very well supported by people from Western Sydney. I had one guy, he came from uh, Sicily. And uh, you know, he's never seen a telescope in his life. Uh, his uh, son was a, was a security guard at Campbell Town, so he brought his granddad along, you know. And uh, so we showed him to the telescope, and it was the first time that he actually looked at the moon. I guess what I always like is uh, the, the first time somebody looks through a telescope and sees, for example, Saturn and you see the rings of Saturn and they see it with their eye, obviously with the aid of a telescope and what looks like a star, a very bright star uh, when you're not looking through a telescope and you suddenly see that it's not a star, it's a planet and it's got these rings around it. Uh, I love, that's what I love to people. You know, the, that, wow, <laughs> you know, I've, I've never seen that, you know, I've seen it in pictures but, or on the internet but I've never seen it with my, my eyes through a telescope. What I've learnt through all of this is that there's a larger issue at stake. There's a greater need for more astronomers and more broadly, getting people to pursue science as a career. There's something wrong with the education system, but uh, it's got to be. Uh, I think science is treated too generally these days, the, the children have to cram so much into the syllabus now, I don't think it's not enough attention paid to the, the right topics as far as astronomers are concerned. Anyway. I mean, uh, we need more people uh, uh, in Australia that are uh, able to do science, technology and, environment and, and mathematical uh, things. We have a shortage of scientists and engineers, and uh, the world's becoming more technological. So, without an understanding, at least a basic understanding of those things, it's going to be very difficult in the future. So, uh, I don't want everybody to be scientists or engineers, yeah. but I want you know I want everybody to have a basic understanding. We have Aboriginal kids. There's a very large community of Aboriginal people living in the Campbelltown area, so I do have a program with them uh, to basically to encourage young Aboriginal students to take up careers in engineering because that's where the money is, you know, and Australia is very short on engineers. We need to get science 
to the younger people. Um, and we just recently did Prairie Wood High School um, science conference there for uh, years 9 to 11, uh, run by the year 12s. Um, and and it, that is the first time we've actually been able to have some input into um, what, goes, what goes on. It takes great creative thinking and enthusiasm to be able to interrogate the scientific unknowns out there especially when you think about how small we are in this infinite universe. I think if you're a good scientist, you've got a good imagination and you're creative. Uh, I really hate it when some people say, well, I'm a creative person, I'm not a scientific person. Well, a good scientist has to be creative. Mm -hmm. You know, the theories you create and the experiments you have to design to test those theories, that's a creative process. Mm -hmm. It's just a different type of creative process without Good imagination and a good scientist. There is a, a run a, a program for a, a better program, more sustained program for Aboriginal kids, not just on astronomy. Uh, astronomy will be part of it, but basically on physics and engineering. Um, I, done, I did a pilot program about five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a grant for $15,000 but uh, haven't been able to sustain it because there was no family funding. So that's one of the problems, major problems. So and that's why pretty serious thing. I think the uh, original kids need to get into engineering, not the, not the humanities. I mean, humanities are okay, but that's where the jobs are. The money is there. There's so much to look forward to in the future of astronomy. What other forms of intelligent life are out there? Would they be an exact mirror of what we are, or strangely different? This is what Hollywood thinks like. You know, this chap here, you're probably familiar with him, Yoda. But this is what Hollywood thinks, uh, what E.T. would like, with lots of eyes, or with lots of eggs, uh, legs. And again, this is our standard view of what E.T. looks like. So far, we haven't heard any messages. Now, have we received messages from ET? Yes, uh, we have, we think we have. And this is what they call it. It's a very famous signal. It was uh, uh, found at the Ohio State University. It's called a wow signal. How would you feel if your home was out there among the stars? If Earth was no longer your home? Or, more realistically, if it was the home of your descendants aeons down the track? Do you see Possibly, I think, you know, because we have found all these extrasolar planets, I think the, the possibility is very high uh, that uh, we will find life uh, on other planets, but at the moment we can only hope. Eventually we have to move. Um, we're never going to be here, we're not going to be here forever, and sooner or later we have to go elsewhere. Uh, human colony on Mars will happen. I ask you all to go deep within and know yourself well and truly. When you think of the stars, think of your place among them. We might all be one speck of stardust in this infinite landscape of planets, galaxies, satellites and stars, but each one of us counts. You see, we are meant to be fascinated by all of this. We all care whether we truly know it or not. It's written in the stars.